Hey everyone, welcome to a new GMS2 tutorial video. I'm just going to make this a quick one. This one we're going to do a line of sight system, a very basic line of sight system. So here we have an empty project. You can you can get this from my Google Docs. I'll share a link with everybody here. Um, and so you can get the empty project so you can get started. But it basically just has two uh, two character sprites and some a collider sprite two environment sprites and we have four objects here um, we have a base actor which is basically everything uh, the parents for everything in the project right now and of course we have a, a player enemy block we have a room with basically those things there and then our player here a player here just has a basic movement script we're not actually going to be doing any any programming with the player. It will all be done in the enemy script, uh, enemy object. Now we have we have what? We have three events here. Now once the draw event's already partially done for us, just so that we can get started with the project. But like I said, today we're going to be implementing the simple version of line of sight. Um, basically how it's going to work is we're just going to have a collision line so this is our key our key uh, code will be collision line which is this one here and collision point we'll get into that later but those are the two key um, lines of code that we will have today right so this is quite simple um, and the reason why I'm doing this separate from my uh, what's it last year's um, action RPG series because well I want to reach as many people and make it applicable to as many games as possible of course that does mean that this will be quite simple and I will give you tips at the end to make it extensible and more accessible for your game your game specifically but let's get started so here in the create event we're going to put in two values here so the first one is site range X um, and I'm gonna set that to 64 now uh, just a quick notice before I keep going forward we're only going to be working on one axis and that's the x-axis but again I will tell you guys how you can extend it to in include the y-axis as well but uh, let's keep going the next variable here is point X or you know whatever name you are going to give it but let's go through these two variables here the first one is site range X so how far this object can see on the x-axis that's left and right the next point here point X um, this is quite uh, vague at the moment but we it will become clearer later now let's go into the step event that's that's all we're going to work with her today in the step event what we're going to do is we're going to set up a local variable a temporary variable we're going to call it hit and we are going to first call the collision line. Now collision line needs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven arguments. And that's what we need in here. We know X1, which is, we're gonna start from our enemy's position. So X and Y. Now X2 will be X plus site range X. And because we're just making, we're making this simple, we're just gonna have Y there. Now the object that we want to check for, we're going to check for B actor objects. And the reason why I'm being very specific is, for example, if you've got in your game, say, I don't know, pick up items, like pick upable items, like, I don't know, experience points or coins and things like that, you want the, well, I would hope that you'd want the enemy to be able to see through that or see past that, because those items are technically not something that you could hide behind. I am planning to do a, um, a stealth mechanic video as well, but um, let's take that one step at a time. The next argument is whether we're doing precise checking, and we're not, so we're just going to leave that as false. And of course, we don't want the enemy to detect itself, so we're going to set that to true. So not me is true. Now, the next step is to have an if statement. If we hit something, for now, let's just leave it as if we hit something, we're going to say uh, show, whoops, show debug message. I don't know. We'll just leave it as, um, hey, 
we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Now, let's play this right now. Let's see what that looks like. Doesn't look like much, nothing's happening. And then when we walk close enough to the enemy, he starts saying, hey, 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 hey. Now, we can actually debug that line, see how far it goes by adding this line in here. We say draw line, draw line. And we're gonna use draw line color. Again, we're going to copy this code here, right? Up to the Y. So we need X, Y, X plus side range X, Y. And then we need to assign it two colors, one for the start and one for the end. So basically, um, it's going to set two different colors, obviously. Just for consistency's sake, we'll just use, see, teal. Teal. Um, I don't know why teal. This. <laughs> It's just something that I chose. So again, let's play the let's play again. It's gonna have the same result except this time we have a teal line going across here. I hope you can see that. Um, but we have a teal line there, and if we get close enough, he starts saying "Hey," and then does it again when we get close enough. Now, what happens if we open up this room and we start putting something here? Now, I'm gonna put this block here. Now, keep in mind that the base actor here is the parent for all of the objects in the scene all right so let's go back to the enemy step event if we play the game now I'm gonna start saying hey, hey, hey straight away because he's already seen an object that's a well uh, a sub object so you might just say hey why not just do this oh player right we could do that and that makes sense, but now he's not saying hey, but when we walk into him, he can technically see past that wall. He can see through that wall. We don't want that. We want to be able to hide behind the wall. So what we're going to do is we are going to replace that. We're going to put that back to the actor. And down here, um, well, we need to get rid of this line first. And we are going to instead say point X, Boom, point X. Now, point X is basically the area that we want to check. So, point X will be X equals, I'm going to type the code out first, and then I'll explain it. Point head dot X minus X um, less than site range X um, underscore head dot X minus X wrong key colon site range x okay so let's go through this step by step here on this line here is basically an if statement so what we're checking is if hit dot x minus x is less than site range if that's true we're going to the value for point x will be hit dot x minus x which could be at any given point and then if it's greater than site range X, then we're going to limit it to site range X, right? So if you can imagine, if we play the game again, I just wanna point something out. If you can imagine, it starts colliding as soon as our player hits that teal line, that little blue line, right? And obviously it's going to continue to detect collision up until we leave. Now, because the site range is here, we need to make sure that it doesn't extend beyond that. So this is basically just a check. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, we need to do something else. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have another local variable. We're gonna call this real hit. And this time we're gonna use collision underscore point. Um, now the difference between collision point and collision line is that while well, collision line is a line, as the name suggests, but point is an exact location in the scene. In this case, what we're going to have, and we are going to use x plus point x. Why? Because we're not really doing anything with y. And this time we are going to use, we're gonna use b actor again. The actor false because we don't want precise checking and true because we don't want it to detect itself. Now, um, well, let's let's keep going. Actually, what we're going to do is actually, you know what? 
let's why don't we actually debug let's see where that draws so what we're going to do is we're going to say draw oh, no p draw and we're going to draw a rectangle not blah, rectangle at um was it point x um minus two now this is just for debugging you don't have to do this draw stage i'm just trying to make something clear so draw rectangle actually i want draw rectangle color so it's easier to see so point x um minus two um y whoops y minus two and then not poo point x um plus two and y plus two uh, color would i don't know we we'll use red c red again you don't have to type this i'm just trying to make things easier to understand by visualizing what's going on and outline we'll set that to false so that we can see exactly where the box is all right um i believe i moved a cube in the way so let's move that dude out of the way again and let's see where that what happens there so okay there my bad that needs to be x plus sorry that's my fault x plus point x All right so my mistake was that we were checking at point x which in the step event is hit x hit dot x minus x that's true but that gives us an actual um, world space coordinate we don't want that we need it to be relative to the whatever object is calling its position so now it should work properly. Okay, so here we can see that the collision point is actually in the middle of the other object, right? And we're making sure that it doesn't extend beyond there. Okay, so that's good. Um, let's finish off this and we're pretty much finished with the video afterwards. So what we're gonna do is say if real hit, not rel, real hit equals equals o well, in this case, we'll just say o player dot id. Um, we're gonna say uh, uh, show debug message. I see the player. Okay, so what's happening here? Well, um, we are actually these two lines here, collision line, collision point, returns the id of whatever it hits. Okay, and so basically here, if real hit is if the object that we hit is the player then we're going to say i see the player and we can prove that by running the code again and we can see down here it says i see the player i see the player i see the player down here at the bottom so that works all good now what if we wanted to say if we wanted to have that block in the way let's put that in the way here now Again, let's play the game. Got a lot of windows now. Now down here, it will it should say that it sees something, but here we can see, if you look closely, we have that little red box there. That's the actual point of collision that's happening. And so basically what we've got now is, well, we can hide behind the wall and we can break line of sight with the enemy. It's very useful um, for stealth games or for instances where you want to be able to hide from the bad guys in your game. Quite useful, um, very lightweight, um, and of course, if you wanted it to do something like when for O block, if you wanted it to say I don't know, print something else. So if a real hit, real hit is O block dot ID, then I don't know, maybe you want it to show debug message. It's a wall. I don't know. It's a wall i don't know something like that let's play that again and down there you can see that it's saying it's a wall it's a wall it's a wall that's because along this collision line is seeing a wall and that's basically all that it's doing okay so um <laughs> let's get rid of that line because well we don't really need it so let's go through this again the first step the first thing that happens is that it checks along a line for any collisions if it does it then sets that point of collision to be wherever it is whether it's along the line or it's at range x and then at var with the real hit we're going to check that exact point for another object so we're basically doing two objects first is if we've hit something 
right? And then we're going to check to see if that object along there is, well, is of a certain type of object, in this case, the player. And if it does, then we can do some code. So here, I'm going to put in a line for you guys to follow along with or to extend with, and that is do something cool or something like that. So how can you extend this? Well, if you guys have been following my my what's it the action RPG series, you'll know that we can easily add like an offset offset x and we're gonna set that to zero or something. And of course a, a corresponding offset not off not off est offset y and we can make that zero as well. And of course here in the step event we can change that so that basically instead of using x all the time we can change it so that if he's facing left then it will be x plus sight range x will be negative 64 right or we can use a switch statement to change the directions and to change what values are put in so another thing that you can do to extend this script or to extend this project is to use sight range y and we can set that to i don't know 64 as well the way that we've implemented it today, because it is just the simple version, I don't know if you guys want me to give you a full rundown of what it would look like in a full version, um, implementing some directions for the enemy too. I guess you can leave that as, as a suggestion, but I've got some other videos that I want to do first. Um, we can put that in there and we can easily type in site range plus or site range y. And that will that will obviously change um, depending on what you want that to be. Let me just set this to zero for a second. There we go. Um, and basically, that is that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all that we need to do today. So again, here in the draw event, these two lines here, these two lines here, they don't really serve much purpose beyond telling us exactly what's happening you don't need them in the game and to be honest you don't need this either so that's pretty much it where can you where can you use this well you can use this for things like turrets i mean apart from you know your standard enemies you can use them for turrets you can use them as trip wires so trip wires are basically just line of sight objects with code that does something different and the best way to actually implement this is to actually run it from a script, a dedicated script, so that anybody can use this line of sight thing, even the player. So what we're going to do in the next video, or yeah, I guess a follow-up video to this would be a different version of it. Instead of just using a single line, we're going to use a rectangle. Just imagine it like this. So instead of collision line, we have collision rectangle instead. Anyway, that's all for me. Um, yeah, I realize this is a quick video and I hope I hope that you guys have learned something if you got any suggestions for any future content um, whether it's in game maker 2 or for something else then you can always leave a comment a suggestion in the comment section below until then guys I'll see you later bye bye